Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. So we are literally counting down the days now until the facelift Taycan drops. Indeed, by the time you're watching this, it might have already dropped. But we're gonna be taking a look and discussing what's changed because we've had more information released from the folk at Porsche and a few moto journalists. So I'm gonna be providing you with my insights on this and what I think we should be looking at here. But before we get there, I just wanted to say a huge thanks to those of you who have already subscribed. You know who you are and your support for the channel is massively appreciated. YouTube is a grind for sure. An enjoyable one, I really do enjoy it. Uh, and we're coming up to about 3,000 subs now, so not too bad, but if you have subbed already, really a huge thanks. And if you haven't, please do, massively appreciated. So, facelift Taycan, what has changed? And we should start here with the exterior. And the answer is, not a lot has changed, really. It looks pretty much the same. And don't forget, this is a four-year refresh. You're going to be waiting another four years till we see any significant redesigns of the platform. That's just the way it works with Porsche model cycles. But what we can see that has changed is, well, the biggest change is with the headlights, the exterior front headlights, as opposed to the rear headlights. But the headlights at the front, right? and they are more aerodynamic, right? I do like the design of the current headlights, but they're not the best in my mind. I do talk about that plastic surround that I don't really like, but we can see from what has been shown on those photos that have been released is that the acrylic lens that fills up that void at the front has been extended, so you get a more aerodynamic, smoothed off look, which I do think works really well with the Taycan. I think I think it's kind of a, a graceful look that you've got now and maybe just gives it a tad more sportiness, a bit more aggression, which I do think the Taycan lacks a little for sure. And of course, we haven't seen any more shots or hints as to what this fancy GT version, the full fat crazy tri-motor version of the Taycan might look like, if indeed it is something that is going to be released. We hope so, I hope so anyway, because I think it will be a riot of a car. No escaping that. So yeah, we'll take a look at the exterior lights now. So let's just do that. And here it is, the current headlight design. Now, I'm not 100% sold on this as I discussed. And the bit I don't like is this cheap plastic surround that fills the void that is left over by the fact the headlight itself is smaller than the area that it sits in and it runs round here and down here to this side vent. I'd love a carbon fibre option here, I think it would look very cool on this car and I'm pretty sure an aftermarket one will be available at some point, if not already. Now the facelift version has a different bit of perspex here, if it's perspex I think, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, perspex acrylic-y type stuff that fills the entire void here or much more so than the current design and it looks like these two points on the four pointed star logo have been extended down into this void here but it is a very different design from an aero perspective on the new facelift if that is indeed what we're going to get what i'm hoping is it will stay like that as in the new design and we won't get to a situation where upon reveal <laughs> It is stripped back and it's like this again and pretty much nothing has changed. I hope they do change something for this. Yeah, that's where I think we're just going to see the biggest change. Now the only other change that I can see that people are talking about is the fact that all models will get that electric fuel filler, electron filler cap thing on the outside. The base models previously had a manually operated one that you clicked in just like your standard fuel filler cap but this new charging port cover on all versions is going to be electric so if it freezes up in winter you're going to be stuck those people with a manual one clearly had a workaround previously so but that is it i mean that really is it from a, an exterior perspective are we going to get some more colors maybe we might see some more special colors released but that really is the exterior changes or maybe some more wheels as well who knows but uh, the VP of product, the product line, this the Taycan product line, I think a guy called Click, hasn't really given us much more information about what we should be expecting. You know, it's all, all still a little bit mysterious. Those journos that have got in one, done some range tests, etc. Uh, also said the same thing that yes, not much has changed. So 
Where are the changes? Well, the biggest changes that are being talked about are what you can't see, i.e. the powertrain, what's under the hood, and the battery. Now, one thing that is being spoken about quite loudly with the new type is the increase in range. Now, the Taycan's Achilles heel has always been range. Indeed, it seems to be the only thing people ever go on about when you mention the Taycan. Oh, not much range in that, is there? And people regularly post photos of their battery and the range they've got on the forums. I don't know why. It's a bit of a banal exercise. You know, your range is what it is, kind of just deal with it and drive the car and charge it when it needs driven people saying oh look at my range in this weather it's not good and people going oh yeah that's bad oh, I've had more range than this what's going on it depends on so many variables it's almost not worth bothering about how you drive the car the temperature etc the amount of power you've got the the variant you've got all of these things it's just just drive it and charge it but you know if you do regular long distances you will benefit from this now People are saying that the new single motor, the base Taycan, has significantly more range and we're being told about 365 miles on a full charge, which is quite an uptick. And it's not clear how they've achieved this, that's the other thing to note here. Is it because of better management or indeed, as some people are saying, is it because we have a larger capacity battery now whether that is a physically larger battery people are unsure about because the platform looks the same or is the chemistry being improved in that that same battery is engineered differently and now carries a bigger kilowatt hour capacity the current maximum one you can get as you know 93 kilowatts like 3.7 is it something around those that mark but the new one could be over 100 as you see in some other models maybe as much as 105 kilowatt hours which is great you know more capacity you don't have to worry about charging it your window of good safe charging between 25 35 and 85 percent is bigger it's just better to have more capacity what we don't want though is more weight Taycan is already very heavy please don't make it any heavier so I hope it's through improved chemistry that we get that the other big change as well that we get is in the charging capability i the rate of charge that you get on the new Taycan 270 kilowatts in this version on the new one they're saying it's as much as 330 could be a bit more which is a significant uptick and I've seen uh, somebody comment they were able to charge it from I think about 6% to 80 80 or 85 percent in 14 minutes one four minutes which is insane on a 350 kilowatt charger that's really good so it can charge higher at a high rate and apparently for longer it can keep that rate as well which is good but you know then I, I say well if you're smashing a battery that hard regularly is it good for it I'm not so sure that it is and I say slow trickle charging is the best for it you know seven kilowatts if you can but that's a topic for another video what else has changed as well well we get improvements to the PCM and Apple CarPlay and hopefully Android Auto as well. There is better integration between PCM and Android Auto in that you can use more functions at the same time. When you're in Apple CarPlay now, you're pretty much locked inside Apple CarPlay and to use the other PCM functions, you have to step back out of those menus so you can navigate around. But apparently I'm told there's better integration now. Also looks like the design of this front dash that you get here has changed a little bit. There's like a kind of pop out recess bit so it sits a bit more proud. So that is something else that we we should see a difference in as well. And I'm sure it'll all be tweaked. Now, the other thing to note as well is that on the mule that I saw, not the mule, this test car that I saw, it had 18,000 miles on the clock. So this thing's been doing some serious miles. And one of the biggest problems we've had with Taycans is, is reliability, right? Things failing. So I'm hoping all of this learning that Porsche have had, you know, is a first gen car. We've got to be frank. It's the same with a lot. The Artura had loads of issues as well has been baked into this new model i really do hope that it has this facelift model gets all these improvements all these fixes so that it is as a whole a much more reliable platform and it kind of needs to be to win people back over because there's a lot of people bemoaning their lack of ability to use the tycon because it's in the garage you know this one hasn't been too bad so Let's hope it's a more stable, more reliable platform as a whole, and I think it will be. Porsche engineers, right, 
I still say what they've achieved with the Taycan in such a short space of time is bonkers, right? And that's why the 911 is such a solid platform. It's been around for donkey's years. So, that's one area. Now, the other thing to consider here, and the last bit I want to talk about in this video, is the state of Taycans, and specifically the residuals right now. Now, Porsche have apparently sold 150,000 Taycans to date, which is a lot of cars. Now, there's a lot of cars out there on the road. In the UK, I don't know the exact figure, but tens of thousands of cars are out there. Seven, possibly, maybe less, I don't know. But 700 for sale on Auto Trader. And what is rubbish right now is, of course, the residuals of these cars. And I don't think it's going to get any better with the facelift for current cars in fact I think it might make values worse yet still and we're not out of the woods it's becoming very hard for me to recommend buying a new Taycan as a private buyer now I'm told circa 90% plus of Taycan purchases are through businesses because of all the tax breaks and I think you'll see a lot of new face of Taycan sold again through this model through businesses to reap those tax breaks which again is going to continue to create a similar situation with all of the leases coming back into market after they the, the three years period is finished or they're being sold away from the businesses because it only works for new cars the VAT breaks uh, the capital expenditure offset against profits uh, benefit in kind only works for new cars right which is why people are doing it with Taycans and not 911s and sorry an EV specifically right that's the key thing it, it's an EV tax break right full battery electric vehicle Taycan is one of those so I don't think we're going to see any improvement in the residuals of Taycans I think it's going to continue to be a very challenging situation for a long time which is why I'm going to really struggle to recommend buying a new one as a private buyer and as much as I think the GT is going to be brilliant I'm going to have to wrestle with my own thoughts for a while in terms of what I do for my next car because I don't really want to be in a car you know I'm enjoying the car but when you get to the end of lease you don't want to be in a situation where you're out in the sea in a coracle without a paddle right so that is it for this one hope it provided you with some insight into the new Taycan the facelift shaping up to be quite a good looking car because I think the current one already looks quite good and not too much has changed but that's it for this one do stay safe stay well see you on the next one and bye for now